Everyone wishes they were a movie star. It's not even about the cars, or the glam, or the drugs. It's about the essence of the celebrity. They have these narratives for lives. We watch them every day and judge their character, their decision-making, their appearance. And we judge and judge and laugh and judge. And when we're done with that, we start absent-mindedly thinking about ourselves. How do I stack up to this guy? Did I have a public divorce from a supermodel only to fall into the arms of another lover who led me down the path of public addiction and obsession? Oh, nobody asks about my last breakup. Was it important? Am I even important? Perhaps I'm just not living life to its fullest. I'd better get working on my tragedy. I've lived two decades, and I haven't yet had a single explosion of living. It doesn't rain outside when I feel depressed. It doesn't always shine when I'm happy. And there's the mood in between. Nobody wants to talk about it because nobody could write a good script with it. You can't build a good story out of that. Where is the catharsis? It's the silent bit, where you were thinking about shouting, but only bit your lip. Jack met Sally. Sally loved Jack. Jack considered loving Sally back. Oh, but he thought better of it. Instead, he married a less attractive, but more dependable woman and had a beautiful family. It brought him happiness until his old age. He died fulfilled. Sally married someone else and died. What a shit story. Where's the high-speed car chase? What about the binging? <laughs> I like reading Metro. It's a free magazine available in Toronto that keeps you up to date with murder and politics and scandal. What if for a day they wrote a story about the guy who considered suicide, but instead came to his senses and painted a frustrated abstract painting with his elbows and a jar of acrylic? Here's the problem. None of this is new. People want to be spoken to like lovers, intimately and with novelty in every word or action. Lives ready-made for us and packaged for consumption on the nightly news channels. There's probably a young man or woman somewhere in this hemisphere complaining about the media on an internet blog. And the media gets a lot of hate directed at it. Of course, self-loathing is more accurate because the media reflects what the weaknesses of its viewers are, and then markets it back to them with the kind of dramatic eroticism you could hope for from your best nightmare. Sarcastic boys and girls all across the globe, spitting at their frustrations with dry mouths in the hopes that their dreams, large or small, will fall to the floor to make a familiar pattern from the books they read and the movies they watched and the hands they held and everything at the highest and the lowest points of human understanding. So why the hell are we buying into this? Why the expletive does everyone need this to live happily? Nobody on the face of the planet will publicly make reality TV from reality. And it's overdosing a lot of teenagers who wished so hard that they were not fucking teenagers that they tried reconstructing the Garden of Eden and ended up with a vast metaphor for despair in the 21st century.